With the introduction of the brand new season on World of Tanks console, Wargaming introduced a brand new tier 10 vehicle that you can get as part of the ultimate season pass. But this tank is anything but ultimate when it comes to the game in terms of both the way in which it actually plays in the game as well as the statistics as we probably uh, kind of identified when we first took a look at what this tank was going to be like and today's video is of course looking at the Highlander 116 F3 which is part of the Ultimate Season Pass. You guys can pick it up for 6,000 gold which comes alongside the Standard Season Pass alongside 25 levels already completed, a Hero Commander that you can see here which looks pretty cool um, and that is basically it. Uh, of course this comes as a vehicle that essentially will Will cost you 4,000 gold, uh, which is equating to at the time of this recording about 14 pounds, something like that. 15 pounds, um, and of course, like 20 dollars, something like that. Uh, and so, for the Highlander 116, that's essentially what you're paying for uh, when you do purchase the Ultimate Season Pass, which for a tier 10 is actually very cheap. And it's probably one of the best parts about the tank is that it only really costs you 4,000 gold. Um, and for the majority of players, you're going to be able to earn back a lot of the gold that you actually get from this or spend on this tank just by completing the season, getting war chests and stuff at the various different uh, kind of ranks in the game. But more importantly, why is this tank a bit of a letdown? Why is it such a um, disappointing, it could have been so, so good? Well, Wargaming have made the 116 F3, which is an auto-loading tier 10 heavy. Yep kind of feels like it's just lacking in so many areas and really doesn't have anything particularly great about it uh, when you do decide to actually play this vehicle and maybe you want to find out how you can take this thing out that's exactly what today's video is going to be all about so straight away what makes this thing at least a little bit special? Well, it is a three-shot autoloader with 530 damage per shell, which might sound... Hmm, that sounds pretty good. Uh, but unfortunately, the problem with this tank, in terms of its main armament, is that it has a th five-second intraclip reload, which means that in order to deal out all three shells of your 530 damage uh, kind of a tank, you're going to have to wait 10 seconds. So from the first shell being fired to the final shell being being fired if you fire exactly when you're reloaded in the intraclip it will take you 10 seconds which is a hell of a long time and often you're actually going to struggle to get out all three rounds unless you have multiple opponents and often people will move back behind cover or find places to hide from you so you often don't get to fully pen all of your shells in contrast, something like the T57 Heavy or the AMX 50B, both of which we've done recently on the channel as Tier 10 Heavy autoloading vehicles, they can output all of their damage, which is four shells of 400, within about six seconds or seven and a half, depending on what tank it is. So they can deal more damage over four shells than this tank can do in three, and it also reloads faster and it has a better engine clip reload, which means that this tank has one of the worst DPMs for a heavy tank at tier 10. It has 2,000... 295 damage per minute and that is with a commander which has the boost to reload speed in the form of rapid loading and so yes it, it has got all of the perks and stuff that you can improve your damage per minute with it's also got ventilation which will also slightly improve your dpm and really that makes this tank super super annoying to actually play that limited dpm means that you are a sitting duck for a long long time during your games and even when you're using the enhanced combat rations it still takes so long to be able to actually uh, kind of use this tank and reload that often you'll find that other players will be able to deal more damage to you. Now that isn't to say that this vehicle is absolutely diabolically bad, it is definitely usable but you are going to need a lot of experience which is why I'm a bit worried that Wargaming introduced this as a ultimate season pass tank as a lot of people are probably going to find it a bit of a sour taste in the mouth considering how kind of experienced player wise this tank is going to perform with as opposed to the generic people who most 
likely are going to buy the Ultimate Season Pass. Uh, and so, yeah, it definitely is not a new player friendly vehicle. And it certainly isn't even really a kind of casual slash person who's been playing the game for a little bit of time either. So it is really about, uh, you know, understanding autoloaders from the very core. You're going to have to have played quite a few autoloaders before this one if you want to make it work. And even then, it just sacrifices so much to be able to get a little bit of armor. So if we look at the armor model of this vehicle, yes, it is pretty strong, at least from the front. And so, yeah, you can bounce a couple of rounds and it certainly is possible to bounce rounds. But considering that, you know, you don't particularly have the best of the uh, kind of main armament that you are going to have to reload for so long, uh, often people can get around the side of you or they can know that you're out of shells and they can deal a ton of damage to you before you're even reloaded. And even when you are reloaded, often the player who might YOLO you can only get hit once because of that five second intricate because they may YOLO you then get behind cover after you hit them with the first shot and that's uh you know if you actually hit because the accuracy of this tank with all of the boosts with vertical stabilizers in the tank is 0.33 which is okay I mean it's not the best accuracy it's certainly not terrible you can hit most things if you aim properly um, but it certainly isn't the best so that's another reason why I find this tank is a little bit weak um, when you also compare that the top speed of the tank is 35 kilometers an hour with a power to weight ratio of 14.5 just about um, yeah this tank is not fast either so you really sacrifice almost everything that the tank can offer you in order to get an autoloader that doesn't really work properly and also then you get a little bit of armor that can work but up against the highest of kind of caliber guns or up against tanks that load premium ammunition the hull armor really doesn't work all too well the tank's hull is kind of low profile it's not super low but it certainly can be penned from above if people are face hugging you and also you'll find that even the lower plate, although it is angled with 195 millimeters of armor, when people load premium rounds with 300 pen plus, they are just going to go straight through that lower plate anyway. So it doesn't really make much of a difference, although lower tier vehicles can bounce off of you. Uh, and even then, as soon as they get a peek of the side armor of this vehicle, they can pen you through the track into the side. And there's also a little bit of a weak point that's on the turret ring where it kind of bulges out if you've ever seen the FV215B which is the British heavy tank you'll see that there are those kind of orange areas just on the front of the vehicle where the turret sits on top of and from the front you can pen this uh, it is relatively difficult to pen reliably but as soon as it angles like this it's a almost a guaranteed pen if you hit it there so it has that weak point for when you do try and side scrape with the vehicle which kind of sucks so if you're wanting to take these things out and you're wondering how you're bouncing off of them that is the area that orange patch on the front uh, and if we look from the top kind of you can see it there uh, just on the front there so uh, with that being said armor is okay it's not awful you can bounce rounds for sure um, and the cupola of the vehicle quite slim but still possible to be hit as well as the fact that yeah you've got that lower plate that basically can be penned by a lot of things even though you know it's supposed to not to be penned um, and it's just pure premium round uh, pure uh, penetration just going straight through that even from tier 8s if they load premium rounds can most likely pen that um, because the effective armor is about probably in the region about 250 maybe 230 and even then probably less uh, in some situations so with that being said uh, that's kind of how the tank is actually done we have set it up with advanced optics to spot whilst we've got that huge reload we want to get some damage or assistance or just help the team out during that long reload so having more view range is going to help us do that for those periods of time uh, we've also got improved ventilation which improves the reload speed which is the probably the only thing you can really do other than rapid loading perk and we want to have that in order to both improve accuracy improve reload improve the view range all by minute amounts but it still adds up and it should make the tank slightly better 
And then of course gun stabilizer for the improved accuracy during movement and also when you're turning the turret so just basically better accuracy in general. Uh, in terms of potential alternatives you could swap out the gun stabilizer for something like the traction system but the power to weight of this tank isn't great so even increasing the speed can leave you uh, still pretty slow because at the end of the day uh, power to weight ratio is done on the horsepower and with the uh, traction system you don't improve the actual horsepower of the vehicle just the max speed so it's going to take you uh, just as long to actually get up to that top speed as normal so you know potentially using max speed and horsepower with the advanced powertrain is potentially worth using um, but at the end of the day it's completely down to you do you want slightly faster or do you want to have better accuracy and be able to spot people from a further distance I certainly want to be able to spot during those periods of time where I don't have anything to do with that horrible autoloader. So with that being said, I think the tank is interesting. I certainly think the tank is somewhat fun, but it definitely is lacking in a few areas. Um, and that really just demises the tank. If they were to make this tank with a shorter inch clip reload, I think the tank would be a lot more usable. Uh, and of course, if they were to reduce the reload time of this vehicle slightly more, you would see that damage per minute start to creep up a little bit. And if you were sat at around 2,600 damage per minute, this tank would be a hell of a lot better. But unfortunately, Wargaming really did kind of screw this tank over when it comes to the autoloader. And if we were to look at the 57 Heavy, which doesn't get the armor, um, but it definitely gets that autoloader, you can see this tank has 3,700. That is almost a 70% increase over the Highlander. Um, so yeah, you can just deal a lot more damage with this tank over the Highlander. Um, and that's kind of where this tank is just basically f falls down is that damage per minute just really does suck this tank dry and there's not a lot you can really do about it other than, you know, try and play. It's not like a weak point or something like that where you could try to hide it. It just purely is terrible damage per minute. So with that being said, I think it's time to actually showcase what this tank is like. And so in order to do that, let's jump into some live games and see uh, how we can do. I can't guarantee they're going to be amazing, um, but we'll give it a go and I can kind of run through how I typically play a tank that has terrible DPM and how you can kind of play up against this tank and highlight when opponents make good use of uh, how to deal and tackle with this tank as well. Now then, jumping into the actual gameplay portion of today's video, we are playing on Abbey um, and this map is pretty decent. Um, and realistically, we should be able to do a little bit of something on this game. However, um, you can see on the enemy team, they've got two machines and an object 780. Very powerful tanks, the two machines. And unfortunately, on our team, we've got three lots of super terrible DPM autoloaders in three Highlanders. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to make up the difference just based on experience. Um, but with the machines, obviously takes a long time to get and often players who are slightly more experienced will be able to get that. Um, so, you know, that is not the overarching case, but, you know, sometimes uh, you will find that a tank like this can be a little bit annoying. Now, with this tank, what you don't want to do is realistically peek on corners up against other people. Because why? Well, this tank is not good at peeking. You have to catch people out of their kind of comfort zone. You have to find them uh, when they necessarily are out in the open. Otherwise, what you're going to find is you're going to try and trade with tanks that probably have more alpha than you. Uh, and they're really going to rinse you of a lot of your hit points. So on this side, we got the 780. A pretty difficult tank to pen reliably if you don't have time to actually aim properly. And with him pushing up, we don't know what's around this corner. So what we don't want to do is overexpose too much. Uh, ideally, you want to kind of side scrape out just to find out where they are. Artillery's aiming over this side. I'm not that surprised. You can see there, terribly aimed shot. TNH pens us straight away. So not ideal, artillery is still aiming over here and there you go, the first round, but we have to try and deal with at least a couple of these tanks. You can see there going for the TNH, uh, the T-54E1s out there and you can see that the Death Star's also there who manages to pen us somehow. Um, and I would assume that that actually went in through the side of the vehicle, which is surprising uh, and I was definitely not expecting that. So yeah. Um, brilliant first game you can see out of all three of the shells uh, you see that the reload time really does impact this tank on how you can kind of play it properly 
what we have to do now in these sorts of games. I'm not going to poke there again. I've only got 300 hit points, so we've got to play a little bit more passively. Uh, the team on this side is kind of, I guess, fairly uh, not in the greatest of conditions. The first shell that we fired wasn't the best, so we can't really blame the tank on that. The second shell was just a case of us missing. Um, so, yeah, it's just a case of it's not a forgiving tank whatsoever. So this is the problem that you'll find in a vehicle like this. And basically all of the vehicles uh, similar to this. The one problem we have here is using this position. You can get hold down. But, of course, when you are hold down, for example... Uh, you still are available for artillery, who is probably going to be the biggest threat for us right now. Hopefully we can get one onto the TNH who's overpeaked here. But of course, given our intraclip reload, we're probably not going to be able to get another one. So I'm going to pull back here. We can't take any hits. The FV can probably splash us, so we don't want to poke him. We need to uh, ensure that he has kind of fired or done something before we poke around. He has now fired, uh, which gives us that opportunity to come around. We finish him off. Is he dangerous? We're going to take a reload here and we're going to back up because there's no point in us kind of poking this with only one shell in the mag. Maybe we'll be able to reload again. So keeping on going backwards, hopefully we'll get away, but it's probably not going to happen. And so what we do is we just pull back to here. Hopefully this guy in the Highlander in our base is going to be able to provide some support. Now, maybe we've won this flank, but we don't really know. The Terrain could get derped or something. Um, or just YOLO'd, so with that being uh, in mind, we see, obviously, it seems like they're having to kind of deal with tanks on both sides, which allows us to pull over, which is fine, and this 780 is not in the greatest of spots now, because he's got a sausage sandwich, we just spot him here, see where he is, and we're going to wait for him to potentially fire at the Turan, and then we can actually start doing something against this guy. He looks like he's just going to try and YOLO, which is typical of basically console players. And of course, he's still coming over. He then auto-aims. Terrible mistake, my friend, because now you are going back to the garage. Not entirely sure what that play was, but okay. Uh, at least if you're going to YOLO, try and get the shot off. Uh, so now we have a long reload again, and there you go. It's basically... Uh, a case of kind of playing very passively. Sometimes you have to make that aggressive play at the beginning. Obviously, if you lose a lot of hit points like we did, we got a little bit unfortunate. Wasn't expecting the uh, FV to actually pen us there. Pretty sure it was the FV anyway. Maybe it was the artillery landing one in our engine deck or firing AP or something. But yeah, not uh, what we wanted, but still made an okay game out of it. We are still up on the amount of damage versus received, which is at the end of the day, if everyone on your team does that, typically you will still win. Uh, we can't really push anywhere. Got to play a little bit passively again. Going through the open in this tank is not great. We've got a teammate on full health, so we can use that to our advantage, hopefully. Our artillery has just dirt the machine, which is always good. Um don't know if anyone's in the middle it appears like there is one enemy in the cap circle um so he is trying to cap and from here maybe we can push over into f3 because we're going to get a better kind of angle on the guys in the cap and help them out and be able to push from there um, and of course you can get shots into your base as well from there so you know sometimes you've got to be quite careful in your placement in a tank like this Obviously not the greatest of games, I'm sure you're going to find way, way better games uh, over the course of this tank's kind of entrance into the game. Um, but certainly, you know, you have to see what the tank is actually capable of in a lot of situations. So with us poking around this corner, can't get a shot on the uh, 703 here. We did see a little area, so what we can use is the third person view. Can't actually see any shots here, so we can push down now. If we want to get some more damage, uh, they're likely going to be pushing towards our base on the right hand side. So if we can get into a position to at least spot them or maybe get some damage extra, we can save this game just that little bit more. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like there's one in the base and maybe they went back to base to be able to reset. It's a medium tank, the M46. Uh, he is potentially going to be up there, which could actually get a shot down onto the top of the hole, uh, which will make that armor significantly worse, so we definitely don't want that. He could be over to the left, uh, but I'm going to risk it for the biscuit and see if we can find him over on this flank. 
and get a little bit more damage. Um, the problem is, is because that medium tank basically has, if he's got the 240 alpha damage on that tank, he can basically reload before we actually have our inch clip reload, which is always a good sign. And so he might be able to get two shots into us. If he's got the big gun, he can take us out in one. So we don't want to kind of over peak too much. We want to get into at least a little bit of a decent position. We're spotted, which will probably mean he's over to the right, which he is. He's got the small gun. So he's got the 240 alpha damage gun. Uh, we can find hopefully a shot into this guy. He's going to try peak again, most likely. Uh, we can kind of poke out into the bushes. He's going to try and peak again by the time we've pushed up. Uh, which is fine might try come down here at the end of the day it doesn't really matter at this point he's still undetected here and we get one more into him no point aiming fully as we're probably going to miss more likely with that than we are with our auto aim so there you go a little bit of extra damage at the end of the game and uh, yeah you can see the Turan obviously uh, being very very balanced with its 7,000 damage. So not the greatest of games, but we salvaged it considering how little hit points we were when we basically had no damage. So not the best trades in the world either. But that was the first game. We're going to jump into another one because we want to see uh, whether this trend continues of just being lackluster. Uh, I've played this tank a few times before doing this review because most likely with a lot of tanks, you can kind of get to grips with them straight away. This tank, I didn't want to post something that was kind of preemptive in my assumptions. I wanted to test it out a little bit more and give it a little bit more of a go. Uh, if you watch yesterday's video, which actually covered a few other aspects, you'll have uh, kind of seen um, the, uh, the kind of couple of games that we did have. We had a couple of okay games, a couple of bad games where you just don't find any damage, um, which can be the case for a tank like this. Um... And yeah, I just found this tank to be a little bit of a disappointment. I was hoping maybe it would have, you know, 3000 DPM, slightly worse than the 57 Heavy, but still slightly more um, uh, than what it is currently. Of course, 2200 tier sixes have that as, uh, as tanks. So yeah, having that at tier 10 definitely doesn't feel all too good. Um, and really, I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say about this tank. Do you think it is an absolute terrible vehicle? Do you think it is a cool vehicle and that a pretty well balanced tank? I'm not entirely sure. I think it's probably a little bit too underperforming to how I would expect a tank like this to play and how much damage you could potentially get. I think it's a little bit too weak in the main armament department. So yeah, I think there could definitely be some changes uh, to that. Just slight buffs. They don't need to be major or drastic. It just at the moment is too low that you just can't really do a whole lot for the majority of the game. And if you do miss a shot, you are just, yeah, sinking that DPM even lower than what it already is. So, yeah, it absolutely sucks. Um, and although it might seem cool to be able to do 1590 damage in a clip, it takes way too long to be able to dump out that clip uh, where you could look at a 57 Heavy, which has four shells and does it a lot quicker. So, not ideal. Um, and so we have to play to the tank strengths and advantages and we definitely don't want to poke up against a Turan that's most likely in the bush because you know Turan things um, being able to do 950 damage um, without getting spotted uh, always always a fun tank but either way uh, quite a few tanks are pushed up so we don't want to push up to where these guys are it becomes a bit of a crossfire and when you've got tanks like the Turan and the Fosh 155 yeah, that could be quite painful indeed. Now, Turan poked and didn't get spotted, even though there's no bushes, which basically tells you everything that you need to know about the Turan. This Highlander looking rather YOLO-esque, um, but either way, we should be able to bounce around here. We're going to get one into him, which is fine. We're now going to take the inner corner, which should allow us to get maybe one more into him. We want to back up because there's the Turan, um, but that's fine. This guy's going to keep coming around. And he can't aim, so we get one more into him. And we've tracked him in place, so yeah, now he is on a big old reload. And hopefully someone else can finish him off, maybe the artillery. Um, but there you go. So you have to trade a lot with this tank, which uh, if you're not used to trading or you're not used to playing a tank with uh, you know, a significantly long reload can be very, very painful. Um, and it certainly feels that way, even from my point of view, who's used to playing autoloaders, heavy tanks, that sort of stuff. 
um, yeah, it does feel very, very poor in that department. But what we're going to do now is we're going to push the middle. I don't really want to push into a Turan, especially with the armor that this tank gets. It doesn't really get any. Uh, so we're going to push over here, see if we can get some side shots on the ST1 here. And there seems to be that there was another person over here as well. So what we're going to do is rather than just go all the way around and hope he's not there, um, we are going to just double check. Seems like he isn't. Now we should be able to get into a nice little position. We find ourselves a little Guardian STG, which is fine. And now we could get one into the side of the Conqueror. He's pushed away. So not ideal. Now we've got artillery probably grinning at the fact that he's found a, uh, a little Chinese tank out in the open. Um, so yeah, let's try and avoid it. We don't avoid it, but we save ourselves a little bit of damage. And uh, the Super Conqueror, I'm a little bit scared that he might go up there, which could be very painful for us. Uh, this Guardian SDG is obviously trying to come out sideways. We're not going to let him do that. And we just back it up. Play very passively. It's kind of how this tank works. And that is uh, why I think a lot of players will struggle playing this vehicle. Now, do I think it is absolutely one of the worst things in the game? Absolutely not. But it certainly is not a fun tank to play. Uh, in my opinion, uh, coming from someone that's played a lot of autoloading heavy tanks and generally finds them very, very interesting and enjoyable. Um, so, yeah, it kind of sucks. And um, that is kind of my conclusion on how this tank plays. And I really hoped it wouldn't be. I hoped it would be a bit more interesting and that would have a little bit of armor that worked. Um, but yeah, even if you can bounce a few, it's often not enough to warrant the fact that you lose nearly <laughs> nearly 100% more DPM or less DPM than you see from some of the other vehicles. So yeah, it is, um, it's not fun. <laughs> it's basically my conclusion. Um, we want to try and get involved over here, uh, but the problem is, is yeah, we don't want to get hit by the Turan and everyone's playing quite passively, so yeah, not ideal. Uh, no real free damage in this game, and you're going to struggle to find free dam like thousands of damage at the beginning. So you've got to be kind of somewhat up close and personal to find people, um, which is a little bit disappointing as well. So overall, it's just a very disappointing tank, and it could have been avoided if Wargaming decided to make it a little bit more competitive uh, in terms of its damage per minute. What we're going to do here is we are going to try and get one onto the Iron Rain. The Iron Rain is a bit of a clubber, so we want to get one into him. And here you go. If we were in the other autoloaders, we'd have got two shots off into that guy. Unfortunately, we're not playing other autoloaders, and we are playing this one, um, which does feel a little bit strange. The STRV was up here, so we've got to be a little bit careful for him. And now uh, you basically become a single-shot tank. Uh, that reloads in five seconds and then after firing three times you have a 30 second reload for one shell um <laughs> so yeah uh that's probably the biggest problem and uh, i'm sure you guys if you've played it know exactly what that's like um and if you haven't played it just take advantage of the fact that this tank really does suck even more when people fire and uh yeah <laughs> it's uh oh god i've not played a tank this bad in a long long time so there's that and there you go, free damage right there. We're going to take a reload because it doesn't look like there's many people wanting to give us some more damage. And uh, yeah, very, very passive tank. Probably for a lot more of the slower players, if you're aggressive and you like aggressive tanks, this is not for you. Um, but saying that, for 4,000 gold, I don't think you can really go wrong with any tier 10 vehicle for 4,000 gold, especially when you consider that the season pass itself will give you more gold than you actually put in. So you're probably going to make about 2,000 extra gold on top of uh, the 2,000 that you get back just from playing the season pass. Um, so yeah, you're, it's only really going to cost you about 2,000 gold, and then of course you're going to have to rebuy the next season if you do want to get that. Um, so yeah, overall, not a bad, not a bad price, not a bad season, just a little bit of a poor tank that I wish was slightly better. Now we are going to try and push in here. There's an STRV, but at the end of the day, we need to start getting a little bit more damage, and hopefully we can find him on our own and uh, remove some of his hit points. Now he could be in the back, which is one of my thoughts. Um, but he may still be where he was previously, so we're going to test out the water, see if we can find him. 
Uh, if you push over here, uh, there is the potential to get hit from the base, which does suck. Uh, where I mean over there, directly where we're looking. Um, so if you do push up from the side, uh, it can be not very nice for you. There's the Yeageru, so let's go after him. And uh, yeah, he's probably looking in the wrong direction. What I want to aim for here is to maybe be able to catch the Yeageru, track him, and then our Yeageru uh, gives me some assistance in the game. Uh, so we're going to push down over here. Where's the Yeageru looking? He's looking over that way. Um, and hopefully we can come up from behind him, which we appears to do. Our Yeageru doesn't aim properly. I'm going to get one into him. And the eternal reload. Oh, can we get one more into the track? Yes, we can. He's probably got a repair kit. No, he doesn't. Uh, can we get one more? Yes, we can. He may pen us here. Oh, he missed and fluffed the shot. He could have aimed a little bit more there and probably we would have been taken out. But now we have a horribly stinky reload and the artillery is most likely behind us. Um, so, yeah, we've got that to contend with as well. Uh, the problem is, is that Yeageru is going to actually reload before we do. So we have to play even more passively. The artillery hits us, which is not good. This guy's probably going to come. Can we avoid actually getting just taken out? No, we can't. I'm an idiot. And uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> what I was intending was to try and slide down the slope. Um, but unfortunately, not going to happen. And if we tried to reverse all the way down the slope, we're probably not going to be able to get away with it um, before the Yeager actually got around. So a little bit annoying there. But hopefully our team can carry this one to victory. We still dealt a little bit more damage than we received. 3.4 thousand and 2,000 blocked. Although, you know, a lot of that was probably from people just flicking onto us with auto aims rather than actual aiming. So, yeah, the tank that I wish was a little bit better. I wish the damage per minute was better. And, um, yeah, pretty poor vehicle. But definitely worth 4,000 gold uh, to actually purchase. Um... It's just, it's one of those that if you're really interested in autoloaders, it might be the one for you. For me, probably going to be one of those that's on the back burner and I play it occasionally. Um, so don't feel forced into buying the Ultimate Season Pass. It's at your own discretion. Hopefully this video sheds some light on this vehicle and gives you an indication of what this tank is all about. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it and of course subscribe for more content coming soon, especially regarding all of the new challenges that have come out as part of the Wargaming anniversary um, and the anniversary bonus and stuff like that, which we'll be covering the T-34, 88, the King Dragon, and of course uh, the new uh, Tier 3 Swedish Lago M38 as well. Um, but whether we'll play the T Tier 3, probably not. Um, but either way, yeah, looking forward to seeing your guys' opinion on this vehicle, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.